Hallelujah. Starting a new series entitled Releasers. In your Bibles, please turn to John 14. Put a marker there. And then go to Acts 10 and put a marker there. <laughs> We're going to get in the Word this morning. John 14, put a marker. Acts 10, put a marker. And we're going to start Philippians chapter 2. Praise God. Verse 5, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. To let His mind be in us, is to take his mindset, to take his attitude. 1 Corinthians 2.16 says we have the mind of Christ, but we have to take that mindset. We have to take that attitude. Now right there, we could stop and just preach that and don't go anyplace else. Have you noticed how easy it is to take the wrong attitude? We have to take His. And on top of that is the wrong attitude. It just seems like it's automatic. And you've got to choose His, don't you? Jesus came to this world with an attitude of humility. In verse 6 through 8 it says, "...who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made Himself of no reputation." taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Yes, Jesus is God. No doubt about it. Yes, Jesus is the Son of God. No argument. But, he laid aside all his God abilities to come down here and be a son of man. Just like you and me. When he walked this earth, he was just like us. In, in his birth, through the walk, to the ministry, through the cross and the death. He was just like us. Listen to these verses in the NLT. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though He was God, I like that, though He was God, He did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Now listen. Instead, He gave up His divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. That's our Jesus. Why did he do that? Because he loves us. Amen? He did all that. Now realize this. He didn't do all that to take us someplace. I just kicked religion just then. It's all about going to heaven. No, it's not. He did all that to get God back in us. If you want the definition of Christianity, is identifying with Christ, knowing He's in you and you're in Him. It's not heaven later. That's in the bag. That's why we don't preach much on, on going to heaven. We got it. Amen? But Jesus didn't come here to take us someplace. I mean, think about that a second. If He came to take you someplace, Sally, and when you accepted Jesus as Lord, right then, you got the ticket, right? What's the hold up? Why didn't He take you? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He came to get God back in us. That's why if you're witnessing to somebody you don't know Jesus, you don't tell them, if you don't accept Jesus Lord, you're going to hell, turn or burn. No. 
You don't do stuff like that. You say, you know what? If you accept Jesus as Lord, God Almighty, the creator of the universe, comes and lives inside you? That excites me. And He'll talk to you inside you. And you can talk to Him. And He'll answer you. And when something attacks you, you can release what He put in you because His life is in you. So you got everything you need in you. And that pain or that attack or whatever it might be just goes away. Wouldn't you want my Jesus in you? Mm-hmm. Now, doesn't that sound like better witnessing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whole lot better. Well, I was brought up like the rest of y'all in here. You know, tell them you're going to hell. Well, well, wait a second. <laughs> it won't work now. No, most people say they're already there. Yeah, most people say they're already there, don't they? Yeah, it won't work now. God needed a man. People say, oh, why did it take so long from the fall of Adam and Eve to Jesus? Because God set up restrictions to do things according to the, the justice of heaven to get Jesus in the world. That's why you started seeing in every book people talk about the Messiah coming. He had to get to that point to where he could be born into this world. He needed a man that he could work through to reveal his life, to reveal the God kind of life on earth And then pay for the sins of mankind. And Jesus was that man. He was the only man. It took years to get to where Jesus was because God had to come down and be born as a baby already spiritually alive. The Word was made flesh. And you think, well, He could have done it sooner. Not according to God. When you get to know God, realize His brain is bigger than your brain. (laughs) He knows more about things than you do. You got a pea brain compared to His mind, His brain, okay? So, just trust God's plan, amen? The Son of God came into this world by humbling Himself to be a Son of Man. And as a Son of Man, He humbled Himself again in obedience to God by identifying with God and not His natural man. Oh, that's good. God anointed Jesus... To show mankind how a man could walk on earth as it is in heaven by identifying with God. Jesus just didn't come to pay for our sins and get us to heaven. He came down here to show us how we could live heaven on earth. And to complete that, He had to pay for our sins. Praise the Lord. Everything that Jesus did on earth, He did as a Son of Man identified with the Father. We have to get this. The church has to get this. Because they always write it off when you talk about Jesus cleansing the lepers. And you can do that too. Your religious thinking is, Well, no, no, no. Jesus, that was the Son of God. No. That was the Son of Man. That's why I'm laboring this right now. He's no different than you and me. The only difference he had, he was serious from day one to be about his father's business. That's what he said at age 12. He was very serious about it until his ministry at age 30. And he walked heaven on earth till 33. And then He paid for our sins. Thank God for our Lord and Savior. The Messiah, Jesus Christ. He did all that for us. Praise God. 
Everything Jesus did on earth, He did as a Son of Man identified with the Father. Jump over to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. I'm still laboring this a little bit more. It says how God, verse 38, Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. You notice it said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Correct? He didn't say how God anointed Jesus of heaven. Correct? He was from the town Nazareth. And on top of that, If Jesus walked on earth as the Son of God, why would He need to be anointed? He wouldn't. God doesn't need to be anointed. But man does. I said God doesn't need to be anointed, but man does. Jesus was a real man. From a real town called Nazareth. And God anointed him so he could work through Jesus. He was as much of a human being as you and me. But he showed us how to identify with the Father. And he went through the cross as a man. Most religions will argue with you on that one. Because see, a man couldn't do that. Well, see, you don't have a revelation of identity either. They're back into their willpower stuff. And there's no willpower for man to do all that. Well, but how about God's power? (laughs) What if God's power gets on your willpower? Oh, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Man, I tell you what. (laughs) It done got supersized. Praise God. What is this anointing? It's the Spirit of God manifesting in power. It's God's empowering presence made evident. Don't look at the Bible and hear revelation and say, oh, that's that's so good. And you just leave it as the knowledge of revelation. Always take it to manifestation. God doesn't give you revelation just to say, <laughs> make you feel good. I mean, I know a lot about God. We don't really care. <laughs> we want to see the manifestations of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus was em- empowered through His identity with the Father to go about doing good and healing all. Verse 38 again. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good, never did bad. That that writes off most confused religious folks. You know, God will put this on you to teach you something. That's not good, that's bad. You mean God's not big enough to teach me something without using the devil's mess? Amen, Brenda. (laughs) And healing all. Wait, 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 wait. Are we included in the all? We're part of the all. He'll heal all, praise the Lord. Then look at the end of that. That we're oppressed of the devil. Once again, you weren't oppressed of God, were you? Get out of your religious mindset. Now look at the end. For God was with him. Now, if Jesus was God, why would he make a point to say God was with me? I am God. No, he was the son of man. And how he did all this because God was with him. That means all the miracles that Jesus did was because God was with him, working through him. Oh, that's good. And he's teaching us how God is with us. And he wants to use us to go about doing good and healing all, letting God manifest Himself through us. Because all Jesus was showing us is how God wanted a man 
to walk on this earth as it is in heaven. And we do that by identifying with Him. Jump over to John 14. John 14. Verse 10 and 11. Jesus is talking to His boys. And He says, Do you not believe that I am in My Father? And the Father's in Me. The words I speak to you, I do not speak on My own authority. Well, that's letting you know he's a man just then. But the Father who dwells in me, he does the works. Verse 11, believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. It sounds like God's big into manifestations. What do you think? I like that. The words Jesus spoke was from His Father. The works that Jesus did was His Father doing them through Him. Y'all stay right there. I'm going to read those same verses in the Message Bible. Pay close attention. Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you aren't mere words. I don't just make them up on my own. The Father who resides in me crafts each word into a divine act. The Father who resides in me crafts each word into a divine act. Well, He does it through you too. I'm going to say it again. The Father who resides in me crafts each word into a divine act. Verse 11, Believe me, I am in my Father and my Father is in me. If you can't believe that, believe what you see. The works. <laughs> That's strong. How are you going to win the world? With the works. Not you being sweet and kind and buying diaper for the baby. Um. I'm on diapers lately for some reason. But that's the church. The church is a social service organization on this planet. And that was not God's plan. It's supposed to be a supernatural organization. And let's take it a step further. It's supposed to be a supernatural organism. We are supernatural. We release supernatural. We release God's power. We release His signs and wonders. And then what happens? Then He manifests it through the words of faith you just spoke. He does it all. He's just looking for a body to use. That's why Jesus came. He showed us how God would work through a a man. And Jesus says, all through the New Testament, follow me. Do what I do. Let God use you. Praise the Lord. Well, I, I think about this 24 hours a day on seeing Jesus. Seeing the God of love manifested. Turning people around. People are called up in the almighty dollar out there. Have you noticed? 1 Timothy 6.10 says, For the love of money is the root of all evil. He could have put anything in there, but he put money. Because it connects to everything else. Nothing's wrong with money. Get a bunch of it. Be rich and wealthy. Nothing's wrong with you having money. But the problem is, is when money has you. That's the problem. And they're caught up in it and they think, I can fix everything. I need more money. I can buy. You can't buy your health. You can assist your health. If you think a doctor can heal you, he doesn't have healing in the bottle. If, if you get that bottle, bring it to church. 
I want to see it. <laughs> he assists your physical body. There's no healing in the bot- bottle. Only God has healing. Why is that? Because healing, health, is God's life. It's the presence of his person. And when I, when I lay my hands on day because his shoulder's in pain, all that's released is the presence of Jesus. Amen. And when I say be healed, all I did is release the presence of Jesus. Amen. Once again, all I did is release the God of love, and he's manifesting love in Dave's body by running off the pain. Praise God. Boy, that's good. All the miraculous works that Jesus did, He did as a son of man identified with the Father. Now, He sends us out the same way. He empowers us through our identity, through our union, through our oneness with Christ. He showed us how He lived heaven on earth through His unity, through His oneness, through His identity with the Father. Now He says, you follow Me. That means as we identify with Him, we'll do the miraculous works He did. And see, that bothers religious folks saying it that way, but then they won't listen. Well, let me mess them up even more. We're going to do His works and greater. Who you think you are? Of all the nerve. You want me to answer or you already made up your mind? Okay, answer. I'm a man in Christ. And Christ is going to flow through this man just like he flowed through the man he was on this planet 2,000 years ago. You're still in John 14, verse 12. Verily I say unto you, he that believes in me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. This is Jesus talking. So right away, don't argue with him. How are you going to do the greater works? We're going to let him flow through us. Praise the Lord. We're not going to believe in ourselves. We're going to believe in Him. Look at verse 12 again. It says, He that believes in Me. You're not believing in you. It's funny how our mind switches real quick when it says you're going to do the works in greater. All of a sudden you think about you. You and you. Whoa, 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 whoa. He said, believe in Me, not you. Do you see that? We have to get this because you're going to have opportunities in these last days to turn somebody around that do not not even born again. And they're going to be in pain. They're they're hurting and you can tell their their faces bothered. Say, are you all right? Well, I'm in a little pain right now. Well, I don't think you're going to be able to listen to what I, I have to tell you about Jesus with that pain jabbing you all the time. Let's go ahead and get rid of that then I bet you'll be able to listen better, okay? Is that okay? And then all of a sudden it leaves? You think they'll listen better? (laughs) Years ago. And you can see it on the face. I don't know if y'all remember, but it's been a lot of years. We're at the old church, and two women showed up. One with a crutch limping, and the other one was just in a lot of pain. Well, I told everybody to come up and... They sat down at, at, uh, on the front pew. I don't know if y'all remember yet. And I just, sat, I just sat right by the woman that was in pain. And just sitting there and finding out what's going on. I could see pain all over her face. I said, you want to get rid of this? Yes. And before I said that, I said, on, on, a, on a level of 1 to 10, what's your pain? She said, 12. Wow. You can see it. You can only hide it so much. We pray for her. I said, Amen. And my normal thing, I'll look and say, tell me what God's done. I didn't have to say that. It all left. I love seeing that. Don't you love seeing that? 
Don't you want to see signs, wonders, and miracles? Well, go for it. Go for it. And the lady that walked in limping, she walked out normal. Well, see, that's been a few years ago. You know, nothing wrong with rejoicing in what happened in the past. I want to talk about what happens this morning. I want to talk about what happens Tuesday afternoon at, at work. Amen? And whether it's big or little, whether you know somebody at work and all of a sudden say, let's get rid of that pain. And you can tell it's going after you say amen. Isn't that wonderful? You know why it's wonderful to us? Because we got the heart of God in us. You know what the biggest problem is? We're constantly knocked down and really constantly broken hearted because religion keeps saying, no, this won't happen. And, you know, you need to be politically correct. And, you know, you don't want to offend nobody. Uh, Not us. We want to see God move and rock your world. See your life totally turned around. Never been, never been to church, and you come regularly because you're you're hungry for more of the of the good news of the rich word of Jesus Christ, your Lord. Praise God. So, how do we do the same works He did in greater? Not by identifying with our flesh. We do it by identifying with Jesus Christ. And then when we identify with Jesus Christ, we release His Word, and then we watch Jesus outdo Himself. Amen. Y'all ready? Amen. I'm ready. When do we do this? Wherever you go. It's wonderful here, but it's so cool when you're in a place that's not conducive For the movement of the Spirit. You're in a place that you didn't have prayer ahead of time. You didn't have the right music playing. Everybody's smiling sweet. You know, let me just talk where I'm at. Just about 20 feet down, they're they're cussing up a blue streak. That that doesn't create a a wonderful atmosphere. (laughs) Huh? Okay, yeah. But... Listen to me, guys. You bring in the atmosphere. You bring in the presence. Amen? So keep advancing. Keep expecting. Keep expecting instant manifestations. Praise the Lord. Boy, that's good stuff right there. Jesus is still walking about doing good and healing all. But He's doing it through us now. When we speak God's Word, we release His empowering presence through us. How many times throughout the day do you want to see His presence? Release it. Release it. I'm not making light of stuff. We're in the fight of faith down here. Somebody can say something to you wrong. Well, get back over. (laughs) It doesn't amaze me, but I'm going to say it that way. It amazes me how quick we can go south. Okay? Get back to headed north, okay? (laughs) Well, I, I I just don't feel like I'm growing. You sitting there on the southbound road saying... I just don't feel like I'm growing. You're not going nowhere. God's north. Get off on the next exit. (laughs) Make a U-turn and head north. But it seems like I'm always going south, Brother Chris. And I don't know why I'm going south all the time. There's an exit coming. Get off. Get back on the highway the other direction. 
don't make a complete circle and go south again. (laughs) We're not talking about new circle. We're talking about north and south. Amen. It's not a circle. It seems like we're on a circle sometimes, don't it? Why don't you just head north? Amen. (laughs) Just head north. Go with Jesus. You can cuss somebody and say, Lord, I repent. You're back to north. How many times can I do that? Well, first off, <laughs> if you're planning that, you're missing it. But you, it could be unlimited times because there's no end to His grace. There's no end to His mercy. But the whole point of all this is Let's grow a little bit. Mm-hmm. Amen? <laughs> and do it less and less. You know when you grow it. When someone says something to you very disrespectful, and all of a sudden you identify with Christ inside, and His presence takes over you. And what they said didn't even affect you, didn't even get you to flinch one bit because it means nothing. Amen. Praise God. Jesus is looking to us to be His body down here now. He's already anointed us with the same anointing the Father anointed Him with. How could that be? Because He's in us. We have to get a revelation of our oneness with Jesus. John fourteen twenty, he said, On that day you'll know that I'm in my Father, you're in me, and I am in you. At that time he was talking to the disciples, and when he said on that day, he was telling them, when I paid a price and I come back up, head to heaven, send the Holy Spirit down, you accept me as Lord, on that day, on that day, you'll know that I'm in my Father, you're in me, and I'm in you. That word know is a wonderful, a wonderful word right there. It's not a cognitive understanding. It's experience. It means experience. Personal experiences. You're going to know it. And that's internal, but it's even more external. You'll know that He's in the Father, you're in Him, and He's in you. Let's turn this up, church. Let's expect that experience of knowing He's in me and I'm in Him. And I'm telling you, if you will do this throughout the week... At your job, you'll be more conscious of His presence. Because you're His body now. He's looking to you to release His love to everybody out there. He wants His love manifested. So they'll see how much He loves them and want a relationship with Him as well. Praise the Lord. In 2 Corinthians 1, 20 and 21, it says, For all the promises of God in Him are yes, and in Him, amen, unto the glory of God through us. Now He which establishes us, or firmly grounds us, with you in Christ, has anointed us, and that's God. The church has split up the anointings, okay? There's not certain special anointings. I have a... (laughs) Yeah, I can't even do it now. I can't even... Don't do that to me, Sally. (laughs) I have a special anointing 
for cancer. I can get rid of it just like that. But you want me to pray for you for your, because you're blind. God hasn't gave me that anointing. Wow. Let me get in my phone. I think I know somebody that has that anointing. He's a good friend of mine. He lives in California. You'll have to get there. See how stupid that sounds? Run far away. <laughs> wow. But people believe this stuff. You know what? You got the special anointing that Jesus has. Amen. See, I've been in this a long time. I've heard of all these special anointings. God moves through me for People that have diabetes. Why well, move through you for people that have cancer and blind eyes if you would just wake up mm-hmm. and you'll find out that you keep getting haughty and high on the on the horse that way, you'll find out the ones with diabetes aren't gonna get healed either because he can only go so far in uh, egotistical mindset that you got. Come on. It ain't you. It's Him working through you. And for that record, your pastor here has every single anointing that Jesus had when He walked this planet. He just categorized it as the anointing. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Well, I've been in this all my life. Some of y'all might have never heard that, but you've heard that before, haven't you, Brenda? Yeah. It gets ridiculous, doesn't it? Now, you got them all, Brenda, praise God. You, you, you got them all, Alice, praise God. We all got them all. As we identify with Him, all of God's promises will be fulfilled through us. Why? Because God has anointed us with the same anointing that Jesus Christ has. This empowerment is in us and ready to be fulfilled through us as we release it. God's ready to fulfill it as we release it. God doesn't move unless man prays, unless man declares the Word. He set that up down here. Amen? So you have to have a revelation that you are a releaser. He uses you to release His Word so He can fulfill His Word. But why do you say you know He'll fulfill it? Because He said all His promises are what? Maybe and we'll see. (laughs) Yes, and so be it. That's amen. So be it. It's not a maybe. You know, it's a 50-50 chance. Hopefully God's in a good mood today. Uh, It's out there. Well, a lot of people think God's on the throne just waiting to punch your number. He has an attitude. (laughs) And He wants to take you out. That's not God. All he wants, his whole heart motive is to see you let him come through you. Mm -hmm. Ain't that beautiful? Wow. All the promises of God are yes and amen. Which means, if they're all yes and amen, that means he guarantees their fulfillment. Boy, that's good. In closing, jump over to Matthew 10. Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 and 8. Jesus is speaking. He's talking to His boys, His disciples. And He says, as you go, preach saying. That means proclaim declaring. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Or the cancerous. Raise the dead. That's physically and spiritually. Amen. Cast out devils. 
Freely you have received, freely give. Or you could say, freely you have received, freely release it. You're a releaser. Freely release it. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. That means it's within reach. Amen? Amen. You know why it's within reach? Everywhere you go. Amen. Luke 17, 21. Jesus said, the kingdom is within you. So the kingdom is within me. And when I go to the car lot tomorrow morning, I'm bringing his kingdom. When I walk in, the kingdom's at hand. Now see, y'all know how I'm talking here. The average religious folk would say, you're arrogant. No, I'm bold and confident in my Jesus in me, in my faith in Jesus, and Jesus coming through me. And it'll, look, it'll make you look a little arrogant, but you know who you are in Christ, and you know who you're not in Him too. You're nothing outside of Him. For that matter, when He came to the planet, He came to kill us. When He died, we died. You need to identify with His death and your death so you can identify with His resurrection and your resurrection. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are nothing outside of Him. The kingdom is within reach. All we have to do is release it to experience it. That's why He said to go. And that means whatever you're doing seven days a week. Preach, proclaim, declare my kingdom. And you'll experience my kingdom, He says. What's that going to look like? You're going to heal the sick. You're going to cleanse the cancerous. Hallelujah. You're going to raise the dead. Physically, spiritually. You're going to cast out devils. You're going to tread on the devil and stop him from treading on people in front of you. You're going to be the channel of his kingdom manifested because you're going to release him into your situation you're in, the circumstance you're in, the people you're around. You are the atmosphere of heaven manifesting or coming through you to manifest at your place of business tomorrow. You bring the kingdom. That's why it's always at hand. Well, I saw somebody the other day and, you know, they they got... Uh, stage four cancer and they got a month to live and and I, I just didn't know what to do and I decided I'm going to go fast and pray. If they got a month, how long is your fasting? <laughs> your fasting is not going to move God. Your fasting moves you to where God's already moving. So don't say, oh, I got to go fast and pray. No, you got to release the kingdom and command that cancer dead. You command it dead. You kill the cancer in Jesus' name. You release the life of God on that person and kill that cancer as you release God's creative life, creating new cells in that body in Jesus' name. Get your head off fasting and praying all the time. The church don't even know how to fast. They get so caught up in all those religious rituals while people are dying. No. No. I'm going to help those people who are dying. I'm going to see God move. I'm going to see His kingdom come, His will be done. I'm going to get me more testimonies. I don't have to talk about the testimony last month. I'm going to talk about the testimony this afternoon. Praise the Lord. Our job is to be releasers. Why? Because we're carriers of the kingdom. We've already received it, right? Now, give it away. Release it. And as we freely release His kingdom, His empowering presence 
will manifest through us and in those around us. You get anything out of that this morning? Praise God. I told you last week, we're going places. I don't know where this series is headed, but I'm excited about it. I do know one thing about this series. We're going to see more manifestations. Praise the Lord.